Are you stuck in a food rut? I kind of am too. So in this video, you're gonna see the meals that we've had on repeat this last week. So this is the meal plan and meal prep for the week along with a grocery haul. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Rouse Rising and I am Katie. Lately, I've been making this high hydration sourdough and I've been using it to make pancakes and sourdough English muffins. So on this morning, I'm gonna show you the sourdough English muffin recipe. I also have it linked on my channel, sourdough English muffins, and I'll put it down below in this video's description. And then I will show you how we make the sourdough pancakes with the same exact dough. Uh, we're going to put two tablespoons of honey in here, a teaspoon of salt, and two teaspoons of baking soda in there. You can then mix up this very thick dough. It's not a thick dough, it's more like a thick, mm, it's between a batter and a dough. You can mix it up with your dough whisk or you can mix it up by hand. So I've made this a few times this week, so you're going to see a compilation of different days of this sourdough English muffin mix. One is made with all-purpose flour and the other is made with half hard white wheat berries that are fresh ground into flour and half all-purpose flour. The key to making these sourdough English muffins is low and slow on your stovetop. So I have a preheated griddle from medium high heat. I turned it down to low and these are cooking about five minutes on each side at a very low temp. You do not want to flip these more than once. You only flip them the one time. If you over flip them or flip them too many times, you're going to ruin the bubbles on the inside and they're not going to cook all the way through. a random hodgepodge of dinner but we've got some asparagus going in the saute pan we've got some bone broth right there with some seasonings herbs and things in it like onion powder garlic powder smoked paprika poultry seasoning we're going to cook up some ramen rice noodles for the kids maybe add a little bit of chili seasoning to it or chili flakes to the kids that like it spicy and then have some a side of asparagus that should be tasty me at the golf course. I'm in my rocking chair. I've got my coffee, my snacks, <laughs> and just catching the rays. Anytime Aaron has a lesson with someone we know, um, we'll probably just bring the kids so the kids can hit some balls too. Um, but for the most part, he'll be teaching lessons without us present. But tonight it's because it's one of his friends and his co-worker. So that's why we're all here. We thought today, since it's one of the last nice days before it snows again, we thought we just better get out here and enjoy this beautiful weather. We went to the lake yesterday, came out here today, and just trying to get outside as much as possible. And then we're going to get some other stuff to make a pie for the pie collaboration. You guys have probably already watched that. Um, so uh, that's what we're doing today. And later this week, it's supposed to get cold again and snowy.
So this is our life now. Golf life retired. And when the weather is beautiful as it is today, there's still snow on the mountains. You can see back there. But today it is, there's snow up there on that mountain. But today it is 60s, mid 60s. Really warm and beautiful and sunny. So we're just enjoying this day at the golf course. When I said I was stuck in a food rut, basically it's not, it's not a bad thing, but basically what I'm saying is I find something that my family really enjoys and everybody eats and then we eat it like crazy and then we move on. So these sheet pan dinners have been life around here with this Redmond's Real Salt Seasoned Salt. It is so, so good. And I'm also using a combination of onion. We're using garlic, paprika, um, whatever seasonings you enjoy. So yesterday I just threw my unfed starter in a bowl with flour and water and salt. And I made a loaf of sourdough bread that way and it was really easy. So I didn't do, I didn't do like the night before make the leaven. I just keep enough sourdough starter in my jar that I can make two loaves of bread. So this is how the bread turned out. This is the other loaf, um, turned out really good. It's nice and moist and squishy, bounces back. Squishy good bread. It's yummy. This is gonna be a quick and easy meal. I haven't figured out what seasonings I'm gonna add. Probably paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper. Uh, I'm not sure what else, but we're gonna slice up the onion, slice up the peppers, slice up the sausage, and we're gonna saute it all in here and get it nice and browned. And then we're gonna throw in the rice and get that sizzling in there. And then we're gonna add in some chicken broth and let it all cook. All right, next I'm gonna add about a can of tomatoes to add some tomatoes to this. And then I'm gonna do a quart of chicken broth. So I'm just gonna get these tomatoes in there, petite diced tomatoes. All right, and then we'll add the chicken broth and all of the seasonings. We'll do paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, some Italian seasoning. And then we're gonna put this on the rice function and let it cook. All right, I'm also going to add some chicken broth and just a couple of zucchini freeze-dried and some freeze-dried squash. I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of organic sea salt, teaspoon of onion, teaspoon of garlic, teaspoon of Italian, teaspoon of paprika, and about a half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. All right, so I put all the seasonings in there. You could do about a half a teaspoon. You may not be using three cups of rice, but I have three cups of rice. I'll add more seasonings if I need to. Once it's done, I'm just adding some water because I didn't have quite enough broth. So we got some water going in there. That should be enough between the water and the broth. Oops, that should be enough between the water and the broth to get that rice and all those veggies cooked. I might add a little bit more seasoning. I'll give this broth a quick taste. All right, I got sidetracked because the babysitter kids showed up. But uh, this is the jambalaya. It's got all the vegetables in it, the meat. Ooh, steaming hot. It's really good. Uh, very tasty. Highly recommend if you want a one-pot, quick, fast, easy meal. Um, just make up that. I also made these chocolate chunk cookies today. I chopped up some chocolate bars that I had and also some of those Cadbury Easter eggs, those little mini ones, so good, and cookies. All right, we made another sheet pan dinner. I forgot the onions, but it has sweet potatoes, red potatoes, yellow potatoes, carrots. We use the Redmond's Real Salt Seasoning. I also put some chicken tenders on there, cooked those. 
I do the potatoes for about 25 minutes. So all these cooked for 25 minutes. And then I threw the chicken on top for another 20 minutes, the chicken tenders, and it turned out beautiful. The kids, this is a favorite meal. Everybody loves it. Everybody eats it. Give it a try. Oh, uh, I did 375 on convection. You could do 400 on a regular oven for 40 minutes, but halfway through, put your chicken on. Caught behind the Venetian blinds How to reach for the city lines and This ain't where I belong Hey, look at me, Mona, what I become We're gonna make these sourdough pancakes And back there to the right, you see I have 700 grams of flour With about 500 to 550 grams of water And then I've mashed up two bananas here Well, let me go back to that flour back there That sat out on the counter overnight covered with a lid and then in the morning I mashed up two bananas I'm mixing in two eggs we're going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract we're going to add in four tablespoons of sugar and about one and a half one to one and a half cups of buttermilk um, I start out with about one cup and then we're going to add it to our pancakes, and if I need to add a little bit more liquid, I will add more buttermilk. So all of this is going to get mixed up really well. And you will notice when you make things like sourdough pancakes, if you leave your sourdough to sit out and you use the measurements that I use, it is going to be very, very doughy. So right there to the dough, you see I'm adding one teaspoon of baking powder and two teaspoons of baking soda and I added my one teaspoon of salt to the dough the night before and it did not affect the fermentation at all as you can see the dough is very fluffy so we're going to mix these two bowls of ingredients together and you're going to see that it is very very thick and very very difficult to mix I don't use a mixer an electric mixer of any kind because the dough wraps around the spindle of the whisk or of the paddle and it just it's a real pain so what I do is use this dough whisk and I mix it by hand the benefit of this is big muscles yeah mixing up sourdough will tone those muscles for sure making sourdough bread regularly will tone your arm muscles and your back muscles for sure. So that's why I like to do it like this. Just kidding. Uh, I do it like this because it's just a pain the other way with the mixers. So this is a very, very slimy, stringy dough at first. I just keep mixing it like crazy. And as I mix it, it gets more and more cohesive. And I'm going to use a ladle to ladle this out. And don't worry, it, it appears to be kind of slimy. But once I stick the ladle in it, I'm able to ladle it out and keep in mind with your mixing bowl that you are adding baking soda and baking powder and buttermilk and sourdough together so this dough or this batter rather is going to rise so you see how much room is left there in the bowl that's about how much it's going to rise in the next five minutes so I've got my skillet behind me preheating and you definitely want to start with a medium high preheated skillet and then turn it down to low. I am using cast iron and cast iron retains its heat very, very well. So I turn it down to low and then pour my pancake batter onto it. And you don't want to start out with your griddle being too cool and not hot enough because we've all made that mistake many, many times. Probably almost every time I make pancakes, I used to get eager and put my batter on the griddle without it being heated up well enough and well then you end up with those pale nasty undone tasting pancakes so make sure your griddle is preheated and that the butter or the oil sometimes I use butter sometimes I use coconut oil sometimes I use lard or bacon grease or tallow it just depends on what I have and what needs to be used up but you want to make sure that is sizzling on your griddle before you pour your pancakes and then you flip your pancakes when the bubbles on top when they start to pop that is how you know when to flip them so you need a couple of bubbles popping on top not just one you need a couple of bubbles pop and you can see the ends of my griddle those cook a little bit at a lower uh, heat because of the nature of the long um, heating 
element underneath of this pan, the ends tend to be a little bit cooler, so they take a little bit longer to cook. Caught behind the Venetian blinds How to reach for the city lines This ain't where I belong Ain't looking me more than what I've become I've been running east Looking for sunset Digging deep since now What I thought was gone was sitting in my pocket in plain sight all alone. I think it's time for me to go burn all bridges. All I know, I got lost along the way. We always keep a stash of yogurt on hand. We try to eat yogurt daily, if at all possible. Some days we don't meet that goal. And we had that with some frozen fruit. And then these are venison burgers seasoned with garlic powder, onion powder, Redmond's Real Salt seasoning, pepper. And we're cooking them in this giant caraway skillet because I can fit seven patties in this skillet, y'all. How awesome is that? And Aaron just ran down the road to the gas station to get the kids some hamburger buns because this wasn't a meal plan. This was a, you know how I do it. I wing it around here. So on the plates, we've got some uh, corn and peas along with some seasoned French fries. And I'm just waiting on those buns. And I put cheese on some of the burgers and put the lid on so that they could steam. And it condensated all over my fresh grilled burgers. What are we going to do? Um, but it's still going to be delicious. And I'm going to serve this up with whatever toppings the kids want on them. And voila, dinner is served. And then we're gonna make some French toast with my daily loaf of bread. The first day I make my daily loaf of bread, I make sandwiches for the kids. And the second or third day, I will make French toast or I will cube it up and freeze it to make French toast later or to use for stuffing or breadcrumbs for different recipes, things like that. But today we are making cinnamon toast. So I've mixed up four eggs with about a cup of milk, um, as much as can fit in my pie pan, and still allow me to mix it up with about a teaspoon or so of cinnamon. And I'm just gonna blend this up, slice up my bread, and cook it on the griddle for the kids' breakfast. And once it's all cooked up, we're gonna smear it with some butter and top it with the delicious plum jam that we preserved late fall. Next up, we have been buying romaine hearts to make our own homemade Caesar salad. Well, not homemade. We're buying the dressing from the store. Who am I kidding? And those croutons, we bought those too. Also, the kids are having turkey sandwiches. And on this day, Annika and I were watching the snow while completing some homeschool. The great thing about homeschool is you can do it any time of day, anywhere you want to. All right, I've got all this delicious meat right here left over from a pot roast. I've got kind of a mess on my counter, but we're going to switch these out. We're going to throw that in there. And then we're just going to throw a bunch of stuff on top of it because i got to go. I've got an appointment. i got a consignment appointment to take a bunch of kids' stuff to the kids' consignment store. So we're going to go in with just a bunch of vegetables. It's just going to be a quick meal for the kids. See, we'll go put some water in there. I'm gonna put a quart of water. A can of tomatoes. We're gonna do a couple, like a tablespoon or so of Italian seasoning. The soup's always a hit. We'll do some pepper as well. I would normally do like some garlic and onions and do like a mirepoix. I just don't have time for that. This was a last minute thought. I was like, oh, I'm gonna get home late for dinner, so I better just go ahead and make this right now. Ooh, I also have leftover corn and peas from last night. So this is how we do it, y'all. What leftovers do you have? Well, this was last night's corn and peas, so we're gonna throw those in there too. Get everything mixed up, and it's gonna sit here and cook for a while 
and then it'll be a delicious vegetable soup. I also need to add in um, a few teaspoons of some salt. But yeah, once that's all cooked up, it should be really good. We're gonna add some freeze-dried celery, some freeze-dried squash, and some freeze-dried zucchini because the soup needs a little zhishing up. Whoa. Okay, go in. Just a little bit of that. Just a little bit there. Give it some extra color. Come on with a little bit of that. Extra color, it might add some extra water and salt. some Redmond's real salt. This is gonna, I'll, I'll pressure cook it until dad to serve it to y'all when y'all get hungry. All right, there we go. We're gonna pressure cook this on soup function. We're gonna do soup function and I'm gonna take it down to 15 minutes. All right, friends, I just got two bags of clothes from the consignment shop for free because I trade in my kids gently used clothing, toys, whatever. And then um, I get a store credit. So I had like $250 or something crazy in there for store credit. And I got each girl four or about four polos for golf. I got each of Torsten and Bodie a black, like warm sweatshirt. Um, and then Riker, I got three shirts. Hagen, I got a pair of jeans. Annika, I got a spring and fall or like summer, cold summer night jacket. Um, it's a North Face fleece. I got all this stuff for free, you guys. I find frugal ways to be able to clothe my children and clothe myself and clothe my husband. I mean, two, two big bags. This is full of clothing and this one is packed full of clothing and a little toy that I got for Bodhi. You put water in these little pins. If you're a mom of toddlers, you've probably seen these, but they're great for airplanes, for car travel, whatever. So I've got this, I'm gonna stash this away for our next trip and Mr. Bodie man can use that in the car on the next trip and that will keep him busy hopefully. So it's just a little water pen. Um, and usually in the car though, he does really well. He doesn't really need any kind of occupying or anything. We give him snacks. We talk to him. Uh, we don't give him like a screen or any of our kids really. They don't get screens in the car. He just looks out the window, takes a nap, has a snack, listens to music, sings. But I thought, give him a little something. Um, his last road trip, he didn't really play with anything at all and it was five hours. I didn't want my kids to get accustomed to always having things occupy them. I think it's good for them to get bored. I think it's good for them to observe the world around them. So that's kind of the goal with that. But got him a little water thing. It was, um, in this store it was $5.34. So I got it for free because I had $250 credit. So. I just went in there because I needed to drop off consignment items. I had an appointment and I just dropped off a big bag of stuff. So I need to go and get the kids a few things for, I do spring baskets for them where they get just some, um, like some goodies, clothing, usually spring clothes, spring shoes, different things like that. So I get them all set up for springtime but I did get them some new items, like new flip-flops, um, stuff like that. So I'm going to make sure that I've got enough for each kid to go in their baskets. I gotta find a few little things for Annika, for Torsten, um, to go in their baskets and make sure I have enough for, for everybody to have even. So I'm also gonna pick up some treats. Okay, I went to the consignment shop, dropped off clothes, found the kids some clothes. Then we went to Fred Meyers and I shopped around there for a while, got some groceries, got some things for the kids that aren't gonna be in this haul. So I don't know if it's it's kind of pointless to give you the total unless I do the math, but I'm not gonna do that. But I'm gonna show you what I got from the grocery store. I also went to Walmart, so I'm gonna show you what I got from Walmart. And then I went by Goodwill and donated some stuff that's donated. If you know anything about the Goodwills in Northern Oregon, they're very ritzy and we went into one one time and um, I couldn't believe like some of the stuff that was in there and the prices that was on everything. And the lady kept saying, 
can you believe it? It's all donated. And I was like, uh, yeah, I can't believe that you charge this much for these items. <laughs> it's insane. Um, so I'm going to share with you this grocery haul and everything that we got and maybe some ideas for meal prep this week. Uh, let's get into it. I'll start back here with my Walmart haul. I didn't get a whole lot of stuff from there, but we grabbed some snacks, fruit snacks, a 40 pack, and then they have the Mountain Trail mix in individual packs. And I find if I buy the large gigantic bag, the kids will just eat all the M&Ms and chocolates out of it. So I'm gonna give them a trail mix bag when they go to the golf course or when they go on outings with dad, they can just have one of those. And hopefully they'll eat everything in their little individual bag. So that's why we got those. We have Utterly chocolate ice cream, mint chocolate chip ice cream, and cookies and cream upon everybody's request for some chocolate ice cream. And then I also grabbed some all-purpose flour because uh, Azure was out of flour. I don't think I'm gonna get any Azure all-purpose flour. So I grabbed some from Walmart because I'm running low and I've been using it a lot lately to make sourdough pancakes, English muffins, sourdough English muffins and to feed my sourdough starter because I'm getting back into it. So they only had three organic flowers there. So that's all I grabbed. And then they only had four maple syrups there. And the organic maple syrup was less expensive than the great value maple syrup. So this was $15.54. And then the great value maple syrup was like $15.98. So grabbed the four that they had of the organic maple syrup. And that is everything that I got from Walmart, that little section right there. Then I went to Fred Meyers and we'll start back here since we're here. I grabbed, I have some balsamic, I can make my own dressing, but I wanna make a um, pasta salad and this is gonna make it quick and easy with some tri-colored rotini. And then Hagen requested Caesar salads. So I grabbed Caesar, we have some croutons. Then I grabbed some romaine lettuce and then they don't like Parmesan cheese. So they'll just have lettuce and croutons and salad dressing and whatever vegetables we add to it. Cause we also have peppers and cucumbers and tomatoes and different things that we can add to the salad. So golden Greek pepperoncinis. These are for Mississippi pot roast. And I got mild banana pepper rings for the folks in the family that like those. So Riker likes those. Torsten likes them. I don't know. I don't think Aaron eats those at all because they're in, probably inflammatory. Uh, one thing of eggs, I want to boil some eggs and I find that there is a trick. I did learn the, the trick to boiling fresh eggs from a farm and, um, but I'm just not even going to wash those eggs or deal with them. So I grabbed a whole bunch of white eggs and we're going to boil some eggs for salads this week. Grab some whole chocolate milk and some whole vitamin D milk. Um, currently, the milk situation, the raw milk situation is, who knows the raw milk situation around my area. If you know about it, comment down below or message me because we need to find some raw milk. So we got some kefir. This is the Nancy's kefir this week. Even though I did go to Walmart, I should have got the other kefir, but we'll try these Nancy's ones this week. And then non-fat Greek yogurt. We get the plain because we can use it to make different dips. And then I also mix the plain half and half with the vanilla because this has a lot of sugar in it. So I mix them half and half when I serve it to the kids and that helps cut down on some of that sugar in there. These were on sale and I realize now that they are the light ones, but I thought we would give these a try. There's one for each kid, one, two, three, four, five. So they each get two of those and they were 162 for a five pack. The feta is for the pasta salad, the tri-colored rotini pasta salad, along with some cucumbers, tomatoes, and I'll throw some other stuff in it. Grab some corn tortillas and we'll make some different things with those this week too. We've got, um, they had the organic lettuce on sale and then I bought some conventional and we'll make a bunch of salads this week. We're in salad mood these last couple weeks. So we got two of the bagged kale salads to have easy salads if we get in a rush, which is always possible days when we don't wanna to have to prepare a whole bunch of stuff. Whole carrots, one bag of those. They had the cutest little baby carrots, like real live baby carrots, like the mini baby carrots that they picked before they got the full length, not the ones that are chlorinated. Um, 
but I wasn't gonna buy those. Those would be really cute in a roast or something like that. They're real fancy. I just got the normal carrots. And then bananas. The reason why I went to Fred Meyers was because I went to my freezer to make soup tonight and I didn't have any frozen vegetables in my freezer to make soup. I could not believe it. So that pantry challenge we did, I used up all of the vegetables and different things in the freezer. So I think now all I have is spinach. I guess I could have made a cream of spinach soup or something. So I restocked up on all the frozen vegetables that we like. We got some stir fry starters, vegetables with asparagus. I grabbed two of those. Vegetables with noodles, grab two of those because we will eat a two pack of those one night and we'll serve it with like some chicken or something uh one large pack of the tri-colored or no the vegetables the mixed vegetables with green beans and everything this is what i like to use in my soups along with one of these because this vegetable soup mix is awesome they only had three there tonight somebody is on to the mojo and this is the best because it has okra in it and the kids discovered that they love okra so we get this vegetable soup mix. I grabbed three of those and then one of these Italian style vegetables because that's what I ended up using in today's soup. The kids had these vegetables in their soup. And then fiesta style vegetables. These, both of these can be made into soups or you can serve them as a side dish. And they're quick and easy. Just throw them in the steamer basket on the stove with some water and you've got a side dish in 10 minutes. These were on sale. I always look at them and I don't wanna spend $7.99 for this little bag of these, but they were $3.99. So I grabbed the two that they had in stock. And we're gonna have some lightly breaded okra. The kids have not had fried okra yet. So we're gonna try the lightly breaded okra and let them try that. And I'm sure they're gonna love it because it's so good. Back here, we've been eating a lot of potatoes. So we've got some yellow potatoes. We've got a big bag of red potatoes. This is a five pound bag and you guys have seen in this video how I've been preparing those. The family is loving them. So we're just gonna keep making them like that on the sheet pan and the oven. And then I also grabbed some Brussels sprouts. I like to steam these or parboil these and then saute them with um, in a pan or roast them. You parboil them with salt to give them some flavor and to cook them a little bit, and then you roast them or cook them in a pan and brown them a little bit, and you can serve them with bacon crumbles, and they're really, really good. So that's how we eat Brussels sprouts, or I do. I don't know if anybody else in the family ever eats them. I end up eating them all because I think they're amazing. We got great tomatoes for the pasta salad. This is one of my favorite uh, plant-based dips spicy queso and I've been eating dairy and now I have wonderful um, effects of eating dairy so if I don't eat dairy I don't get any acne and then when I eat dairy I have horrible acne I'm gonna try to quit eating dairy again and see if I can clear up all the issues that I'm having we've got a pack of salami this is a pound eleven dollars and forty nine cents for this salami and then a um, pack of turkey oven roasted turkey. So we'll make the kids some sandwiches. And also Aaron likes to just grab some meat out of the fridge, some lunch meat or any kind of meat that we have that's already cooked. And he can have a quick meal or snack with that. So that's also why I got those quick and easy. Then we have two packs of the boneless skinless chicken thighs. I season those and put them in the air fryer. You can put them like put some olive oil, coat them, toss them in a bowl. I think I might do that tonight. I'm not sure. It's really good. I grabbed two packs of those and then they had oranges. This pack of oranges was $2.99. Heirloom navel oranges. Maybe I should have gotten a whole bunch more because they were on sale, but I got one bag to see if the kids would eat them. And if they do, then I can pick up some more another day. So that's everything we got. All right, this is a super easy breakfast because I bought the sausages already pre-cooked. I just threw them in the air fryer. Aaron cooked up some eggs, and these are leftover sourdough pancakes. And the kids can also have fruit when they're done with this, but that's an easy breakfast for five kids. In the oven, I have some root vegetables, baking or roasting, rather, with a convection roast feature in the oven at 375 and while those vegetables are roasting a little bit I'm getting these chicken thighs seasoned up with some paprika we're doing some Redmond's real salt season salt some garlic powder onion powder and poultry seasoning and then we're going to throw these on top of the vegetables and let them cook for about 
25 to 30 minutes or until they're cooked all the way through. You saw I made some slices in the meat to help them cook a little bit quicker and it does help the chicken thighs cook a little quicker and these are boneless skinless thighs. so much for hanging out with us this week and going with us on our adventures and seeing all the things that we got into this week our grocery haul and we will see you in the next video bye